What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to this video. Today we're carrying over with basic malware dynamic malware <laughs> dynamic malware analysis. And in this video I am taking over task four five where we talk about process explorer as a tool to dynamically analyze the malware. Now one thing to notice is I'm doing the videos for these tasks separately, not because the tools are used separately. No. In, in dynamic when you are dynamically analyzing malware it's a rule of thumb to coordinate and correlate the results from these tools for example you might be running process monitor to monitor a certain process its network connections uh, its PID and what are the, uh, uh, the activity it's doing on the file system at the same time you would also correlate the results with a process explorer which we will be taking uh, taking today as, a, as, as an example of this video. You might also correlate the results of Frost Explorer where you might take a closer look at the activity of the malware or the binary in memory. You might be looking at the stri strings, the handles, the files, it's opening, uh, how much resources it's consuming from the CPU. All of these information should be correlated together from different tools um, to be able to um, have a complete clear picture on what's going on and what's the behavior of the malware. So today we're talking about Process Explorer. So go ahead, spawn the machine, log into the machine, and what you're going to do, you're going to launch Process Explorer, leave this running, as you can see here in the screen. So as you can see, this is the pane of the Process Explorer, and this is the lower pane. By the way, you can show the lower pane here by going to view and clicking on show lower pane. We're going to talk about why this view is important. And after you launch Process Explorer, go ahead and launch the malware you want to analyze. For example, in today's video, this is the sample we are analyzing, 1.exe. You open, go ahead and open that. And then once you see the malware showing up in the process view here, you can start the analysis. It's, there is a lag in the uh, display here because of the network connection. Um, so here, as you can see, I have the malware opening up and I can see here all of the related information. For example, as you can see, the column here displays the PID of the process. In the description, as you can see, we see the description of the binary. Now, the description along with the company name give you an indication or an insight about uh, who's the author of the malware, whether it is a company or individual, and the function of it. But it's not <coughs> a definitive insight on the uh, behavior of the file because malware authors these days are very skillful in uh, creating or masquerading normal binaries or their uh, malware as uh, system binaries. We're going to talk about this. Most of the techniques they use are process masquerading and a process hollowing. We're going to talk about this in this video. So, description and company name give you insight about, again, we said the author of the uh, binary and a description of what it's supposed to do. All right, so we see here the CPU usage, the private bytes. Now, what's important is we click on view and we show the lower pane. <coughs> Since there's a lower pane here, as, mal as a malware analyst, you want to take a look at the handles of the specific binary you are analyzing. So you can see the handles here. Let's highlight one example. This is the malware. We can see the handles. We can see the DLLs. Or we can see the threads. Okay. Now, handles, <coughs> we can take a look at the files, the DLLs, registry keys, mutexes that the malware is consuming or using while it is running on disk or in memory. As you can see, we see directories, we see files, we see registry keys. All of these are called handles. Now, taking a look at these is of tremendous importance because by analyzing what are the handles the binary is using, we can conclude, we can partially conclude what it's trying to do. Okay. Um, as you can see, we have mutexes as well, mutants. Now, mutants are very... Um, useful if you want to control access to a shared resource between threads and as you can see with the threads and workstation names 
dealers now dealers are also important in the dynamic analysis because you might want to grab one of these deals and analyze it separately like you can upload it online and see the results uh, what ha what the uh, security solutions have to say about the specific deals and you can see the threats all right so what's the methodology when we are dynamically analyzing uh an executable with process explorer so the first thing we want to take a look at is we can right click and go to properties in here first we want to we want to know who are the authors of this binary so we go to image first we see here the path where it is stored okay and the command line uh, used to launch the binary and we can see here uh, the version and the build time but with the process explorer if the verify button is not grayed out it means that the binary needs to be verified whether it is official binary belongs to the operating system in this case it is microsoft or uh, it's developed and authored by someone else so we can click on verify and as you can see it says no signature was present in the subject it means that the file here isn't very isn't not verified to belong to a specific organization so that's the first red flag about any file there is no signature that gives you an indication or a clear name about who developed the binary now sometimes even though there are some malwares or some binaries they have specific signature like let's take a look at this one so if you right click on this specific um, the windows log on application we can see that the, uh, it's verified if you click on verify as you can see it's verified by microsoft windows and it is defined as windows log on application while this is good indication that the file is not a malware but advanced malware developers can use something called the process hollowing so in process hollowing what happens we have a specific binary like this one so what they do they hijack the code of this specific microsoft binary while it is running in memory okay so this version of this official binary this is the version running on disk and it's verified as a windows logon application so when we take a look at this one from process Ex explorer we kind of uh, get uh, kind of you know uh, relieved that this binary is um, official and belongs to microsoft but if malware authors chose this binary and applies and apply some sort of uh, process hollowing you might still see the verified sign here on the file but in fact in memory it is running as a malicious process that's called process hollowing manipulating the application code or the uh, executable code while it is running in memory you're not going to be able to uh, uncover this uh, on the version running on disk this is the version running on disk there's another version running on memory we're going to detect how a binary can be hollowed uh, in this video so the first indication is the verification or the signature of the file all right as you can see here we can see have they can have your data execution prevention status so this is a useful feature that microsoft developed uh, in order to prevent from buffer overflows attacks it's very useful if you see this enabled on a binary you are analyzing it's also a green flag all right so let's take a look now at the tcp ip now tcp ip here shows all of the active network connections again we go back to the what we said earlier in the video we can launch process monitor and correlate what are the network connections shown here for this specific process with the output shown here in process explorer so for example when log on uh, we don't witness any active network connections if we check on the binary itself here that we are intentionally analyzing and we go to tcp ip as you can see we have one connection so the first thing the first red flag that it's not verified and other red flag is that it has an active network connection to an apparently an address that we don't recognize so it is highly uh suspicious right all right now if we go to 
the strings in the strings here we can check all of the um, strings uh, in the binary itself and as you can see we have image and we have memory now the difference is the strings shown in the image here represent the strings uh, of the executable file running on the disk like this one this is the version running on disk now memory the strings shown in memory represent the strings that are shown or stored in the binary that is running in the memory now normally the output of the strings should be the same in memory and on disk if you see a difference this is an indication or this is another red flag that the file is malicious because when the strings are different uh, between the version running in memory and the version running on disk it might indicate process hollowing okay or process masquerading so when the strings are different this is another huge red flag beside the, the active network connections and this verification of the, sign the signature verification all right let's close that and we go now to handles so we click on handles so first as you can see the DLS again we said that the DLS can be analyzed by comparing them to a known version online or by uploading them to a service like VirusTotal the files now the files here also give an indication about the behavior of the binary we are analyzing as you can see these are the files that the binary is trying to access if you see something sus sus suspicious that the binary is not supposed to access open modify or delete then it is also another indication here we see the registry keys now the registry keys that are getting accessed modified deleted or opened by a specific binary should be related to the function of the binary itself for example i don't expect a binary like the um, let's take an official binary here a safe one for example the google update let's take a look at the registry keys it's accessing so you can see the current version um, these are all normal registry keys like it's normal they are being accessed but what is not normal is that we see uh, the binary itself accessing registry keys related to keystrokes or related to startup now one single registry key that's being accessed is not an indication that a specific malware or a specific binary is malicious you have to compare all of the registry keys and make sure that there is more than one registry key being accessed and it's a weird case let's go back to this one let's take a look at the registry keys so we have let's see the current control set the session manager and we have as you can see it's accessing the internet settings a binary like this one um, you have to find out if depending on the context actually this is a demo scenario but depending on the context you should um, be able to discern whether a malware or the binary is supposed to access such settings on the registry like internet settings the explorer as you can see it's accessing the uh, the internet explorer as well the feature control let's scroll down see other registry keys it's accessing the security settings of internet explorer again scrolling down yeah so as you can see there is a heavy internet activity of this malware so you have to ask yourself whether this binary is supposed to have internet access or is supposed to manipulate that much registry keys related to internet access all right so again the same with the files now mutants we can talk about mutants later but it's like it kind of advanced it's related to shared resources on the memory uh, it's very useful if we talk about this in a memory forensic video uh, dealers again we, we talked about dealers that you can analyze them online but uh, you can just what you can do for example this application is accessing a crypto dll bcrypt 
crypt too many crypt or too many cryptic or too many crypto dlls might indicate that this is a ransomware might you have to again correlate the results uh one one single or one output from a specific column here like the dlls or a specific aspect of your analysis isn't enough to conclude the behavior of the binary you have to correlate all of the results uh again if we uh, right click here as you can see we can submit this to virus total now submitting a binary to virus total is part of the static analysis but you can uh, you can also um, use it as a tool in your arsenal while you dynamically analyze a specific malware back to properties all right so we talked about the signature we talked about the network connections we talked about the strings now again let's talk about the performance so here it's giving you an insight numbers about the consumption of resources okay uh, being done by this specific executable when you have when you have high uh, resource usage like let's take an example if we have high resource usage like the cpu or the physical memory it might indicate that this file is doing some activity that requires these resources like crypto mining crypto mining when if, if a specific computer is infected with a crypto miner when analyzing the crypto miner you will see huge cpu activity here or the physical memory because crypto miner rely heavily on cpu power uh, so the numbers here also give you an indication and above all the name <laughs> of the file itself right yeah i don't recommend using the name as uh, an indication on the nature of the file because as i said earlier malware developers or authors can hide a malware inside uh like a windows executable like this one this is called process masquerading if they are able to hide the signature of it this is called process hollowing hollowing all right now it's time to answer the questions in this task so monitor the sample one using process no the, the, this is the task okay what's the name of the first mutex we talked about mutexes created by the sample one.exe if there are numbers in the name of the mutex replace them with x so if you go back again to this executable and we go to handles mutexes are handles again they are used to control access to shared resources and the memory the first mutant is this one you can right click properties and copy the value so what you have to do you have to replace the numbers with x's as you can see i replaced the numbers with x's as required or instructed by the question is the file signed by a known organization answer with yes or no we saw that it's not signed by any organization it's blatantly telling you i am suspicious file <laughs> is the process in the memory the same as the process on the disk now it also talked about this if you go to strings and you see different output between the process in, in the disk or and the process in the memory it might indicate that the executable is using process hollowing so no not the same output and that's the answers for this task questions so guys we are nearly done in the next video we're going to use rekshot to analyze or dynamically analyze the malware by closely taking a closer look at the registry keys and auto on the startups so that was it for today guys i hope you enjoyed that and i will definitely see you later